part two of the Postgres Heroku tutorial. Um, where we left off was we uh, were able to create the database and create the schema for the database of our project, right? So let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. Uh, as we can see, we have two tables in which there are there is nothing in either table. So let's go ahead and try to persist some data. So let's begin with the trainer. We're going to go ahead and insert into the trainer table. And a trainer had an ID, a name, and the number of badges. So let's give it some random values. For example, maybe one, two, three, four. Maybe the trainer's name is Andy, like me. And he might have seven badges. So when we insert and we do the select again, we'll see that it's in the database. Now, when we come back here, let's open this here, we can actually observe the data clip like we had earlier. So in this data clip, let me open it in a new tab so I can keep the credentials open. In the data clip, for example, let's say I want to select from trainer, and I can see that my trainer is indeed here. Now, if I try to create something in here, it won't let me. All right, so let me uh, copy this here and this one. So as you guys can see, uh, we can do read-only transactions inside of this thing. Now, it's not always convenient to be typing things into the terminal, right? So what we're going to do is I want you guys to head on over to Google and type in uh, data grip. All right, so data grip is basically an ID for uh, databases, SQL, that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead here and download this. And you'll select the appropriate version depending on the operating system that you're running. And once we download this, um, you know, I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. We're going to head on over now to JetBrains Education because this software um, only gives you a 30 day license. But with the Uniandis email, you can apply for the educational license. Right, and you can type in here whatever email address you have at edu and it'll confirm the subscription for an educational license. All right, now once we open up Data Grip, the first time you open it, it's going to ask you to provide your login credentials, and once you do that, um, you'll be set, you'll be able to use Data Grip um, using the professional educational license. That way you don't have to use it for only 30 days. And as you can see in my case, it's registered to me and it's active until March 10th. So this is really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit new. We'll hit data source. We'll click Postgres and we'll go back to our credentials tab. All right. First thing we'll do is copy the host information, which we'll put um, let's go back to this. We're going to put over here and then we'll find our user name, which will go here, the password, and then the database name. All right, guys, so once we have all of this, we're going to hit test connection and we'll wait for it to give us a success message. There we go. This is checked. So we'll hit apply and then we'll hit OK. So back in data grip, we'll see that um, we'll have a new connection here with our database. And if we come in here, I can see our schema, which is there. We have our schema, which is this Pokemon. We also have the schema for trainer. There we go. And we can see the different constraints and the public key, private key, all of that information. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a at the console. So uh, I've already prepared uh, a script that I'm just going to copy and paste. And what this is going to do is it's going to create some trainers. So let's take a look. We're going to create th four trainers, Ash, Don, Lyra, and Brendan. 
which are the traditional uh, trainers from generation one, four, two, and three, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to give Pokemon to each of them. So Ash's ID, these are going to be Ash's Pokemon. These are going to be uh, Dawn's Pokemon, Lyra's, and um, what's his name? Brendan, starting from here. All right, so let's go ahead now and execute all of this. So it's inserting the values as we expect. Let's wait for that to finish. All right, looks like it's done. So what we can do is we can either leave this console there or we can just eliminate the console and type something else in. So now let's try to play around with some queries. Maybe I could say select all from Pokemon, run this, and here we have our Pokemon and the trainers. All right, now maybe we can try doing something else. Maybe we can say um, select from Pokemon, let's put this here, and maybe we can say where trainer equals 781227, which was Ash's ID. And there we'll see Ash's Pokemon. All right, now you guys can play around with this SQL, but the important part is that now we can see these trainers and these Pokemon. And if we come back here, if we'd like, and I test the database one more time, I can try to obtain all the Pokemon, we'll see that this is running and it's on the internet. It's data stored in the cloud. All right, now we can maybe come here. We can see the data, which should take us to the same thing. Let's go back to this example. And now we see that we have one of 10,000 and there's four connections, right, to this thing. So let's go ahead and come back to the data clip. All right, well, while it loads, let's open this data clip again. And if I come here, I can see the schema. And we can save these different uh, queries. However, I just wanted to show you guys that the information is all here. All right, if I select here from trainer, save and run, we'll see that our trainers are indeed there in addition to the one I created via the terminal. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I can even select it here as well, if I want to see. Select from a Pokemon, and I see them here as well. All right, so that was just a very basic introduction to how to set up a database from Postgres onto the Heroku platform. So in the following videos to come, I'll be delving a little bit deeper into the SQL uh, syntax. All right, well, that's everything for today.